So now that we've looked at matter, we're now going to look at measurement. And this should be a review of what you did last year. Um, but if you forget any of this, please make sure that you read uh, chapter one in your book because that will definitely help you as we go through this. So um, we have what are called the SI units. Um, so this is um, the international system. Um, this is what scientists all over the world use. Uh, we're used to the English system. Um, so we're used to measuring mass in ounces and pounds and tons and measuring length in inches and feet and yards um, or time in minutes and temperature is the big one in Fahrenheit. Um, the SI units, these are our base units. So we use kilograms, meters, seconds, Kelvin, and moles. Um, we'll use amps toward the end of the year. And we don't really ever use candela. So like I just said on the last slide, these are the base units that we use. Um, we're going to use grams for mass, meters, seconds. Um, we'll use either Celsius or Kelvin. We'll talk about when to use what. Um, and then for amount, we'll use moles. And for volume, um, usually we'll use liters um, or cubic centimeters, which is the same as milliliters. So as we work through, we're also going to be looking at what are called derived units. Um, one example of derived units is density. So density's units are grams per milliliter. Um, and so the, that's derived from mass and volume, right? So density is mass over volume. Um, or you can think of density as gram for every milliliter, um, but that's a derived unit. So using density, since we were just talking about it, um, here is an additional example. So to identify a liquid substance, student determine its density. Using a graduated cylinder, she measured out a 45 milliliter sample of the substance. She then measured the mass of the sample, finding that it weighed 38.5 grams. She knew that the substance had to either be isopropyl alcohol or toluene. Um, what is the calculated density and what is the identity? So see if you can work through this problem, pause it, and then continue uh, once you get the answer. So in order to find this answer, um, we need to start by calculating density. So remember density is mass, which is grams, over volume, okay, 45 milliliters. So when you do 38.5, divide it by 45, we find that the density is 0.856 grams per milliliter. So remember, another way to say this is for every 0.856 grams, we have one milliliter of substance. So what is the identity? Well, let's compare to the two densities that we were given. The one that's closest okay, would be toluene. That would be our answer. So another example, um, three spheres of equal volume are composed of aluminum, silver, and nickel. List the spheres from heaviest to lightest. Again, as you work through, find keywords. Okay, the keyword here, equal volume. Pick a number. All right, I'm gonna make it easy, and I'm gonna say the volume is one centimeter cubed, which remember is the same as one milliliter. Okay, so I'm gonna say this is my equal volume, which means my aluminum has a mass of 2.70 grams. Right, remember, for every one centimeter cubed, we have 2.7 grams. Silver would be 10.49 grams, and nickel, 8.90 grams. So list it from heaviest to lightest. Okay, heaviest is silver, then nickel, then aluminum. Make sure you read the question, put it in the correct order that they want. Okay, and then here is the final question. So three spheres of equal masses are composed of gold, platinum, and lead. List the spheres from largest to smallest. Okay, again, look for keywords. Equal masses. Pick a number. Okay, um, usually I try to pick easier numbers. One, five, ten, something that you can work with. Pick the number and then solve your density formula. Now, be careful when you solve. Okay? Do not let algebra get the best of you. So if we start, for example, gold has a density of 19.32 grams per centimeter cubed. Equal masses, I'm just going to say they all are 10 grams, divided by x 
centimeters cubed or milliliters. Now, how do I solve this? I think through it. Well, I need to start by multiplying both sides by x. Right? You cannot have x in the denominator. So now I have x times 19.32 equals 10. Divide both sides by 19.32. So you get 10 divided by 19.32, and that's going to get us our volume. Okay, so again, you have to remember what you're trying to solve for and make sure that your algebra doesn't get the best of you. So it's 0 0.518. You have got to be careful with rounding. Okay, if you look at your calculator, this is 0.51759. That rounds up to 0.518. Right? If you do not give the right value, um, if you don't give it rounded correctly, it will not be right. So be careful. So if you solve the other ones the same way, um, solve platinum, solve lead, what you're going to find when you put them in order um, is that the largest is lead, then gold, then platinum. So these last few examples are the types of density problems that you will see. And you will also have to use density in stoichiometry problems. Can you use density to go from mass to volume or volume to mass? A density is a conversion factor. You have to be able to use it. Another thing that you will have to make sure that you can use is the metric system. Okay, can you convert from one prefix to another? So prefixes convert the base units into units that are appropriate. Um, so for volume, typically we use milliliter. For uh, length, a lot of times we use kilometer. Um, when you're talking about computer uh, memory, you talk about gigabyte or terabyte. Okay, so you have to use um, the correct prefix for what you're working with. And you have to know how to go from one thing to another. So our base unit goes right in here. Okay, kilo means a thousand. So there are 1,000, let's just say grams, in one kilogram. Everything up here is bigger. Okay, these all get the ones. Everything below the base unit is smaller, so that means base unit gets the one when you're doing your conversions. You look at examples as you go through, um, and you really, you just have to do practice with this. So, some examples. Um, what is the name given to the unit that equals 1 times 10 to the negative 9th grams? So what you need to look for is 10 to the negative 9th. Um, you're going to want to know your metric. Specifically, you're going to want to know 10 to the negative 3rd, negative 6th, negative 9th. Right? Just like we look, we're looking at in this example. And then kilo, mega, um, those are going to be the two important ones that are larger. So 1 times 10 to the negative 9th is nano. So this would be a nanogram. Okay, so one nanogram is one times ten to the negative ninth grams. Um, ten to the negative sixth. Okay, that is micro. So this would be a microsecond. And ten to the negative third, right? So that's one over one thousand. Well, think about that. That's milla. So that is a millimeter. Right, there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. What decimal fraction of a second is a pico second? Okay, so we need to look for pico. Pico is one times ten to the negative twelfth. Um, write six times ten to the third meters using a prefix to replace the power of ten. So look at what ten to the negative third is. It's a thousand. So this would be six thousand meters. Well, if we think about that, that is six kilometers. And then finally, use exponential notation to write 3.76 milligrams in grams. So think about how to go from one thing to another. Okay, this is where we can use information from last year, 3.6 milligrams, time sign fraction bar. There is a thousand milla in one base unit. So that's 3.76 times 10 to the negative third grams. Notice I include units. So volume, 
Okay, most commonly used units for, for volume are liters and milliliters. Um, this shows the liter compared to the millimeter, or the milliliter, excuse me. Um, a liter is one decimeter cubed. Okay, so notice this shows you the one decimeter cubed. Um, that is one liter. Um, and then a milliliter is one centimeter cubed. All right, so again, just ways to go between length uh, and to volume. So temperature, um, the definition of temperature is the average speed of molecules. Okay, so temperature is all about the speed of molecules. Now, um, temperature is also considered the hotness and coldness of an object, um, and it determines the direction of heat flow but when we start talking more about temperature, we're going to talk about it in terms of the speed of molecules. So the higher the temperature, the faster the molecules move. The lower the temperature, the slower they move. Um, in scientific measurements, um, the Celsius and Kelvin scales are most often used. Um, Celsius scale, a, that's based on water. So zero degrees Celsius is uh, freezing, 100 degrees Celsius is boiling, that's where the Celsius scale comes from. Um, we use Kelvin in almost all of our calculations. Okay, so Kelvin is the one that we're going to use in almost all of our calculations. Um, and the reason why is because absolute zero. Okay, so absolute zero um, is zero Kelvin. And that is when all movement stops. So Kelvin cannot be negative. So since Kelvin cannot be negative, we would never have negative numbers in our calculations, which is very good as we start to get into some complicated calculations. Um, and the way to go from, Kel from Celsius to Kelvin or Kelvin to Celsius, if you remember, K equals C plus 273. Okay. And then um, you typically see Fahrenheit for us in the U.S. in the news, and that's how we measure temperature. Um, but you can go back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Again, the U.S. is the only country to use Fahrenheit, um, but it would just be too difficult to switch. So um, here you have the two conversions from Fahrenheit to Celsius or from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So here are two examples uh, with temperature conversions. So pause, see if you can go through these conversions, um, use the formulas. The biggest thing, again, make sure you can go back and forth between Celsius and Kelvin. Um, because that's going to be really important as we go through. So here you can check your answers. Um, notice the difference in temperature. So we consider 86 degrees Fahrenheit fairly warm, um, and that in Kelvin is 303, right? So um, you can kind of see the difference there. So then you can also see the difference between 55 Kelvin um, and what that would be in Fahrenheit. So this should not be Celsius. This should be degrees Fahrenheit. You make sure you include units on everything. Notice Kelvin does not have a degrees sign. Okay, so you only put the degrees in front of Fahrenheit and Celsius. Kelvin does not get 